Wojstek is here. What's next for business and consumers? Przed Państwem Frederick Jozu, Global Executive Advisor, Havas Media Group. Zapraszamy. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, good morning, everybody. I'm really pleased to be here. So the right title of my presentation is this. Uh, we're going to see how can we all together move towards a more human-centered design of marketing, a more human-centered design of what we do in a daily life. I mean, Alessia, uh, you've talked about this this morning, and it's really interesting to see how major companies of the economy are doing this move. So let's talk a little bit about, if I can move to the next slide, about history of the economy. What fueled the economy from the very beginning, I would say from the Industrial Revolution till the age that we are living? What designed the economy was coal and oil. The economy was designed around these two assets that were commodity, that were really cheap. And we lived in an anthropic world, in a very centralized world where governance was vertical and centralized. One company that could define this time was Chevron. Cities were really large and consumers had to drive to catch some food, to buy things. People had to drive to go to work. Then we moved to what's called the digital age, where data becomes a community and is really cheap, where by the time 2002, the amount of analog data produced was less important of the amount compared to the amount of digital data. It's the time of digital platforms where everything comes to the consumer and you don't have that much to move, to buy things, to watch a show, to watch a movie, or to interact with a service. It's data-centered and this world, it's pretty transversal. Competition comes from the outside. There's no entry barrier in this world. For instance, Tencent or Alibaba could be the next big bank worldwide. And a service like WeChat that has a payment service on the back end could be the leading bank of the world. It comes from outside of the banking industry. One company that could define this platform economy could be Amazon. Then we are moving, and that's what I'm going to present to you, to a post-digital age, where the fuel of the economy are human beings, where all the design of the economy, all the design of marketers will be human-centered. This world will be much more organic. This world would be much more decentralized in terms of governance. One company that could define this world would be Alphabet. I'm pretty sure that you all know what Alphabet is. So let's come back. We're in 2011, we are in the digital age. These are the principal market caps of the leading companies of the world. In 1945, the leading company was an oil company, it was Chevron. So in 2011, it's interesting because there's a switch happening. Oil companies are going down in terms of market cap. 2011, it's the beginning, I could say, of technology convergence and the beginning of technologies that are coming from B2B, business to business, to business to consumer. It's the launch of the iPhone 4S, for instance, 4S for Siri, which was one of the first assistants. Siri, so it's AI coming to the consumer. And then going forward, you have all the tech companies going up. And 2017, October precisely, the leading companies of the planet in terms of market cap are tech companies. And you have Apple leading the way with $900 billion market cap with $300 billion cash money investing in the digital economy. And these companies, this outstanding and fantastic companies led by people that have a vision and a vision not only for business but a vision for the planet. This sounds crazy but in a way it's true. Uh, they created what is called the platform economy. So what's the platform economy? We could say that most of the middle range to 
big companies of the planet are here in front of you. From your mobile, you can reach your dentist, you can buy things, you can watch things, you can do whatever you want, you can connect to all the businesses from the planet. I mean, your bank is here, your dentist is here, the guy that repairs your shoe are here, etc. And here are all the content that are on the marketplaces, like 50,000 movies on Amazon, for instance. So you have access to everything wherever you are, with whom you are, nobody cares. Consumer has access to everything. The point is, here, consumer is totally lost. He doesn't know how to find his way through this mess. So the digital platform economy has an issue with attention, but has also an issue with curation. How do you find your way? So if we watch what the content platform and what the digital platform are doing, it's really interesting. Let's see the example of Amazon and see what it tells us in terms of story of what the GAFA, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, BATX, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, Xiaomi, and the Natu. Do you know what are the Natu? I think it's only in France that we tell that. Huh? So it's Netflix, Airbnb, Tesla, and Uber are doing. They are creating in all this mess enclosing ecosystem. They are enclosing the consumer in a small place that they own, that they govern, and that they master in terms of user interface and user experience. How do they catch the consumer? They catch the consumer through experiences, outstanding experiences. Amazon has created Amazon Game Studio, so they catch you with games. They've created in 1905, 1995, Amazon Books. So they catch you through book, they catch you through content. These contents are movies, they are TV series like Transparent, and they catch you with storytelling around organic food. I don't know if you know Whole Food, it's a bunch of great stories around food. And all of this content is here to catch the consumer and make sure that the consumer gets inside the Amazon ecosystem. And how do they make sure that you stay inside this ecosystem? It's thanks to AI. AI, in the back end of the ecosystems, connects all the assets from Amazon thanks to metadata. They have bought IMDB. So it's content to connect all their assets. When you watch a movie, then you go to another movie, you go to another book, and then you end up with a pair of shoes. That's what Jeff Bezos said. The more I have golden globes, the more I sell shoes. So you catch the consumer thanks to experience. These experiences are Trojan horse. And then thanks to AI, it, they make sure that you circulate inside the ecosystem and you don't go out. That's exactly what you've told us, Alicia, this morning. So assistants are here to curate things and help you enter ecosystems. What is interesting is that this platform economy is part of a larger system that is smart city. What is interesting at this point is that the GAFAs, BATX, etc., they are the lead investors in what is called smart cities. Smart cities are cities that use technology to provide to their inhabitants sustainable future. Okay, and all these cities are connected thanks to technology. So Google, Apple, Amazon, etc. they are the lead investors. They invest in smart environment, smart living, smart governance, etc., etc. For instance, Baidu, which is a search engine, invests a lot in AI and urban planning. As we'll see, Tencent invests in bicycle. Uh, Apple invests in a building with high quality in terms of respect of the environment. So they are investing in the smart city. And what is interesting at that point is that these companies have created, this is the conversation prism from Brian Solis, they have cre created the digital media. When they did not create it, they managed the way you go to these media. I mean, Google and Facebook, it's 70% uh, of the internet traffic. Google itself is 93% of market share on the search. So 
when they don't create the digital media, they master the way you go to these digital media. And their goal, investing in smart city today, is making sure they encapsulate the platform economy inside the smart city and they create a great ensemble, continuous and integrated, that they will be able to commercialize to the consumer. The consumer being a citizen also, uh, a consumer being also a spectator because all this is fueled by content to catch the people and all this produces massive amount of data. That is what is interesting. The more this is all connected, the more it's capillar, the more it's organic, the more the experiences bring people inside all these points of interaction, all these points of, in of experiences, the more it produces data. So the more it produces data, the more we get to learn about the consumer and what is called pain points and be able to solve these problems. There are technologies behind uh, this new economy. There are technologies that make smart city possible, this big ensemble possible. There are technologies of intelligence, intelligence being uh, knowledge, insights, and technologies of connection. The IoT is one of the first technology. By 2020, there'll be 50 billion IoTs in the street connecting everything, your body, your, your clock, uh, your doctor, everything. This will bring to marketers and to this economy, not big data, massive data. So this 50 billion IoT will produce massive amount of data, richer data, and more heterogeneous. The problem with this data is that you will still have to go through Google, Facebook, and Amazon to reach the consumer. There'll be a, a like what we call a Chinese wall. Augmented reality is a great uh, technology for the smart city because it will transform the relationship and the mediation between consumer and people and brands, but consumer and people and retail and services. You will have augmented information when you'll be in the shop. Thanks to your phone, you will just put it in front of a product and there'll be a layer giving you more information about this product. But when you'll be at home, you will be able to interact with your bank, with your insurance company, also thanks to augmented reality. That's why all these GAFAs are investing a lot in augmented reality. Artificial intelligence is key, as you said it. Artificial intelligence is here to automatize, but most of all, it's here to streamline, to make easier the relationship between someone and a service, someone and a, and a producer of content, someone and a producer of product, may it be shoes. Huh? And artificial intelligence knows about you thanks to data and metadata, and it can think for you and anticipate. And the last mile of delivery being 40% of the cost of the delivery, most of these companies are investing a lot in drones. You'll have in cities, empty buildings where drones will land inside. In most of the cities today, there's a lot of buildings that are empty and it's AC. And you don't, you don't know that, but it's AC to refresh, I mean, for instance, subways or buildings. There will be drones landing in all the places, maybe. And then you have technology of trust and security because a smart city can be attacked. There is 200,000 malware attack per day um, in, uh, in the world, costing $4 trillion per year. So blockchain is part of this decentralized economy. It's part of this uh, data economy, and it will help make the transaction more safe, more sure. The same with biometrics. Biometrics, I'm sure you've seen the fish face recognition uh, produced by Alibaba so that you can pay with your face. And since September last year, you have uh, an iPhone that lets you um, pay or recognizes your face and lets you connect to systems uh, thanks uh, to facial recognition. And cybersecurity, I mean, it's key because what um, hackers attack, they, ac they attack Wi-Fi, they attack the internet, and they can block a whole city, a whole economy. What is interesting at that point is that all these technologies are heavily invested by these 
top five, top six companies, and they are mastering this, this technology. They are investing a lot, a lot, a lot. And these technologies, they help these companies getting closer every day more to the consumer. That's why we are moving to a human-centered uh, economy. Thanks to data, thanks to connection, we are getting to learn much more uh, about the consumer and we can leverage this. That's why we are slowly moving and I say maybe it will be by 2030 we will move to a post-digital age. What is a post-digital age? It's an age where digital is connected to physical and that's exactly what uh, augmented reality is, is doing and that's exactly what the GAFAs and BATX are doing by investing in the digital, digital world sorry, and investing in smart city. They are connecting the two worlds so that there's no more separation between this. So let's see what they are doing. They are leveraging data and connection, these companies GAFAs and BITX to invest in human related business and to leverage uh, this uh, data and connectivity. Verily, uh, it's the investment from Google in health. Amazon, so 1492, I'm sorry, you can see the two, but it's Christopher Columbus. It's the secret weapon from Amazon in health. All these tech companies are investing massively in healthcare and in health tech. And this tech will be fully connected, will be fully part of the city. That is what is interesting. They leverage data to get to know much more about people's pain point and to solve people's problem. And they are making a business out of it. Most of the companies today, they do cause program, they do cause marketing, they do engagement marketing. These people are investing in people's problem. And that's a switch. That's a different approach. And this could be called impact investment. They invest in within uh, causes and they want impact and they want to make it a business. They go much farther. Look at what they are doing. They're investing in energy. Google today is the lead investor and lead buyer in the planet in renewable energy. They've bought Nest. Today, they are buying a lot of stuff in renewable energy. Vanda Group, Chinese group, Chinese entertainment group, invested 10 million in two hospitals in Genju. Alibaba, within the next three years, invested 15 billion in AI, cybersecurity, and health. Apple is investing in Didi, the Chinese autonomous car company. The greatest example, I think it's Tencent. You know Tencent, WeChat, uh, social networks. They invested in drones so that they can deliver stuff to you. They invested in Mobike. Mobike, it's the sharing bicycle that you have in the street. I don't know if you have here in Poland. In Paris, it's full of Mobike bicycle. And they invested in Guahao. Guahao, it's a platform that connects parents to doctors so that they can find um, and book a doctor any place uh, in the city and connect to this doctor and book a rendezvous. Baidu investing in autonomous car. They are all all these companies, even Amazon that invests in agriculture, vertical agriculture, that has bought 16 planes, they all invest in what is uh, businesses of sustainable futures. And here are the six businesses of a sustainable future. And these are the businesses where all the innovation, I mean, most of the innovation in marketing today comes from um, these sectors. And they know that and they invest in that. And how do they do that? By leveraging, again, data and connection. Education, transport, health, agriculture, energy, and defense. And these are all human-centered businesses. So now I will ask, I think, like four questions to you. And maybe you can raise your hand. So you. You've heard my presentation, hope it was clear. Now you have to work. Are we using the city as our own business playground? When you think about your strategy, do you use the city as a system? Do you use Google Map? Do you use Waze? 
Do you use all these apps that provide a great storytelling thanks to the city, knowing that 70% of the population will live in big city and major cities by 2015? Who uses this in their strategy? Who uses the city? Raise your hand. Dominique, please lie. L raise your hand. Thank you, you're great. <laughs> have someone here great so it's a great system to um, develop storytelling for your brand are we using tech tech being data being AI to automate to optimize and to reduce cost or are we using and Dominic your example was great are we using technology to create new products do we have a financial approach of our business or do we have a growth approach of our business? So who's using like Amazon did, Amazon invested in a lot of vertical, then it says we have to connect all these things to metadata data and use back end and front end AI to create a new product and they've launched Alexa. So are you using tech to create new product or to fire people? Raise your hand. Great, two points. I'll give you the mic at the end, huh? be careful. <laughs> Next question. Are we leveraging technology to radically diversificate? I mean, this is an example from Fujifilm. Fujifilm was a camera seller. They created cameras, great cameras. They created great films, analog films. And they used their technology, sensitivity related to beauty, to create healthcare products. And now they are one of the leading companies in healthcare. So, are you using CD? Are you using uh, technology to diversify and to create a new business? I mean, your banking company, will you go to transport? using technology, no, using what you are at, uh, at the very heart of your business. Last question. Are we focusing on the people to create a sustainable business? Are we listening to the consumer? And today we have the tools to listen to mothers, to fathers, to kids, to consumers, even to disabled people. Google Assistant is a fantastic tool for disabled people. You know that 4 to 8% of the people on the planet are dyslexic. Some of them, they can't read. And it's a great tool to connect them back, I mean, even at school, to the world we're all living in. Are we focusing on the people to create a sustainable business? This is the example of Capital One in the USA that is creating 100 coffees that are in neighborhoods in the in the USA and that connect to the culture of the neighborhood. I mean, if you go to this coffee that is in Santa Monica in Los Angeles, you'll have a connection to all the startups in which the bank from Santa Monica is investing. So you'll see all the products from this startup. But moreover, all the bakeries that you'll be able to buy they will be from the bakers, the organic bakers from the city. So the company is investing the last mile. It is getting closer, thanks to all the technologies that we've seen that sustain this smart city, to connect to the people and to listen to them. And when you listen to people, you can address their issues, you can solve their issues. They've learned that in some neighborhood of Los Angeles, for instance, there were a lot of unbanked people, people that have less banking services than others. They've learned that they had gender inequality related to banking. So they can address this just by listening, thanks to data, to people. So with these examples, you get to learn what is the basic strategy of the GAFAs, BATX, etc. They price the consumer, they don't price the product. They don't care about their ideas, they care about people's problem. They don't focus on them, they listen to people. 
And most of our companies from the old world, I would say, and even us sometimes, I would say, that's why I always said we, okay, and not you, we price the product and we don't listen to the client. The old world was pricing the product. Google, Amazon, etc. they priced the consumer. Dr. Lib is a great example. So you see the city, okay? What do they do? They understood that mother, for mother, it was really hard to book a doctor. They never know, mothers, what is the best doctor for this pain that my kid suffers from. Then they've created Dr. Lib. Dr. Lib simply maps around you, wherever you are, because it knows where you are, geolocalizes you, and it will bring to you the best rated doctor on the discipline that you're looking for. And then you are able to book um, uh, a doctor rendezvous and to manage this rendezvous also. Then it will go into your uh, Google agenda and maybe it will be used thanks to Google Assistant. So data, connection, smart city, platform economy, and price the consumer. Listen to the consumer. Another interesting example is YoGoWo, a startup that we are hosting within 18. What do they do? They make sure that they will provide to you the best sport coach around the place you live. So they map the city, they map, they have mapped in LA and in Paris 400 coaches and they can tell you that in the park right behind uh, the place where you live there is a slot at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning for nine euros and you can subscribe to this slot and you can do sport there and then they use it all the data to interact with people I mean you take pictures of this and then you interact and you share all this information if you have to remember something it's this quote, don't price the product, please price the consumer. You have today all the tools to do that. Thank you.